So check it out. This is the DJI Power 1000, and this is the EcoFlow Delta II. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing a comparison between the two. We'll find out what similarities they have and the differences between the two as well. So hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be able to determine which one's right for you. So the first thing I wanna talk about is some of the similarities between the two. Because with the uh, EcoFlow Delta II, it weighs in at 26.6 pounds and the DJI Power 1000 weighs in at 29.6 pounds. So this is actually three pounds heavier than the Delta II. Next, we'll talk about the similarities in size because even though the Delta II is more vertical and the Power 1000 is more horizontal, the dimensions are very close to one another. With the Power 1000, you're gonna be nine and a half by 17 and a half by nine. And then with the EcoFlow Delta II, you're gonna be 11 and a quarter by eight by 15 and a half. And both of these units are pure sine wave inverters. And I verified that using my oscilloscope and the sine wave on the Power 1000 and the Delta II was absolutely perfect. Both the Delta II and the Power 1000 have LFP batteries, that's lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries, which give you a lifespan of over 10 years if you use it on a daily basis. And you're still going to have around 80% on both of these. So they rate theirs at 3000 uh, cycles and you got 80% left and they rate theirs at um, 4000 cycles and you get 70% left. So in the end, that's almost identical. They're using the same cell chemistry in the batteries, and both of these have the same watt capacity as well at 1,024 watt hours in the Delta II and the Power 1000. And up to this point, the similarities between the two have been almost identical. So from this point forward, I'm gonna start talking about the advantages of one versus the other, and then you'll have to determine whether that's important to you or not. And for some, being able to expand a power station is very important. For others, not very important at all. They don't even care. So if you're looking for expandability, the Delta II is the only one that's expandable. And this can be expanded up to over three kilowatt hours of capacity. The DJI Power 1000 doesn't have a port anywhere on it that it can expand with an expandable battery. So if you're looking for that feature, the winner is gonna be the Delta II. And if you're an EcoFlow lover that just don't see anything wrong with any of their power stations, you're probably not going to like the rest of this video. Now, I do like EcoFlow and I think they make a very high quality portable power station, but we're doing apples to apples comparison between the two. And for me, the most important things in a portable power station is going to be your input of solar and your output of the inverter. And from this point forward, the DJI Power 1000 gobbles up the EcoFlow Delta II in every one of these categories. Let's keep this in mind. I'm going to talk about price. This one right now is coming in at $699 on the DJI website. This one right now on the EcoFlow website is coming at $899. So for $200 less, I'm able to purchase this one. So let's talk about the AC output of the inverters. So we'll start with the Delta II, and the Delta II has a continuous output of 1800 watts and a surge power of 2400 watts and an absolute peak power of 2700 watts. The DJI Power 1000 has a continuous output power of 2200 watts, a surge of 2600 watts that can handle that for 30 seconds, and then an absolute peak power of 4400 watts. So you can see that the DJI has a clear advantage over the Delta II in the outputs. And then we'll bring these closer together. And I'm gonna look at these right here, the USB-C outputs. This is one of the only power stations I've ever seen with 140 watts of output on the USB-C. And that is 140 for that port and 140 for that port. If we move over to the Delta II and you use the USB-C ports, then you're only going to get a max of 100 watts out of the ports. So another clear advantage is to the Power 1000 when using these ports. And both of these are equipped with the UPS function. UPS stands for uninterrupted power supply. And if you're unfamiliar with that, the way that that it works is if you have something plugged into this and you have it plugged into an outlet as well, it's actually powering from the outlet. And this is going to be a pass-through no matter which unit you're using. 
So when the power goes off at that outlet, then these units take over and power whatever you have plugged in to the AC outputs on these. And the uninterrupted power supply is how fast that switch goes when the grid goes down and it switches over to the inverter of the power station. So there is a clear winner here. Although they have a similarity that they have this, the function, there's a clear winner. This switches at 20 milliseconds. And this one switches a little bit slower at 30 milliseconds. So you want that to be as fast as possible, especially if you're powering uh, sensitive electronic devices, then this is definitely a clear winner. Now, if you're just powering regular lights or something like that, really that pass through doesn't make a difference. So it depends on your overall use of the power station if that even matters to you how fast something switches. And I'm not even sure if you're going to be able to see me in this demonstration, but on this side, we have the DJI Power 1000, and on this side, we have the Delta II. So I'm gonna plug these in from the back. We're gonna get them to charge. They're both setting it right now around 95%, so I'm trying to make this as fair as possible. So we've got 95% here, 95% over there. Now, when I unplug these, currently what just happened is that it's being powered by AC power. Now, when I unplug this, it has to switch over to the inverter on the power station. So first we'll start with the EcoFlow Delta II and we'll see what type of flicker that we get. So pay attention to the light right up here. So that's a very noticeable flicker. Now let's do this one over here, the Power 1000. That one is so much faster. The flicker is not as bad in the Power 1000 as it is in the Delta II. And it's a very clear, noticeable uh, difference I don't know if the camera is picking it up as well as my eyes are picking it up, but that one is definitely a lot slower switchover rate than the Power 1000. Although both of these units can charge at a maximum of 1200 watts from AC, there is a big difference in the solar input. This can only handle a maximum of 500 watts of solar input this can handle a maximum of 800 watts of solar input. So given this, the ability to charge much faster with solar in a portable situation. So if you have this out uh, on a tailgate campsite and you're just using this out somewhere and you don't have access to an AC plug, this is the clear winner of being able to charge it faster with solar panels. And technically, even in an AC charging situation at a maximum of 1200 watts to both power stations, the DJI still charges up faster in 70 minutes from zero to 100. This one takes 80 minutes from zero to 100. So even though they could charge at the same rate, they have the same capacity on the battery, this one just charges up a little bit more in percentage before it starts slowing down versus the Delta II. So giving it the capability of charging 10 minutes faster than this one. And if you're a drone owner, the chances are you own a DJI drone. And I'm going to tell you the advantages that the Power 1000 has over the Delta II and any other power station that you can buy. The Power 1000 is designed to charge up the Mavic 3, the Air 3, the Inspire 3, and possibly even other drones at a much faster rate than you can get out of any other power station. And why is that important? So if you're out doing aerials, and your batteries are running low, your only option before the Power 1000 was to have some type of power bank that you could charge them up with, whether this is a portable power station, a portable power bank, or even charging in your car. And it took forever to get them charged. Now with the Power 1000 paired with your drones, you could charge those up at a much faster rate. So now I could charge those batteries from zero to 95% in around 30 minutes. So that is extremely fast in comparison to what options I had in the past. So clear winner for charging drones will definitely be the DJI Power 1000. And something that's often overlooked is the noise level of a power station. Whether you're gonna have this in close proximity or out in the open really depends if this is gonna be important to you. For some people, they don't care if it's out in the open, then you got a bunch of ambient sounds anyway, so everything's kind of loud. But if you have this in close proximity, then you want these to be as quiet as possible. With the Delta II, the reading that I got out of it was 59.3 decibels. The Power 1000 
is the quietest portable power station that I've ever tested. I couldn't even get a reading on my sound meter. So my sound meter stops when it reaches 30 decibels or lower. So their rating is 23 decibels. And I did test these at the same input rate of 1200 watts of charging to get my readings. This one come in and it just had a low symbol on my uh, sound meter, meaning I couldn't even get down to how low this thing actually was. It is whisper quiet. It's quieter than a, a mini split when it's on silent mode. So it's very, very quiet. Quietest portable power station I've ever tested. This one was a little bit loud coming in at 59.3 decibels and it was charging at 1200 watts also. So if noise level is important to you, or if you ever think you're gonna have these in close proximity, the Power 1000 is the clear winner. The design of each one of these are similar, but definitely have clear advantages depending on how you're gonna store them or how you're gonna use them or where you're actually gonna be plugging these in at. So this one is more vertical and it has plugs on the front, the side, and the back so depending on if this is in a very tight area is how you can get your plugs to it and if you have enough space this way this one everything is in the front so you could put this into a a space and everything is going to be from the front the only things that operate on the side on this one are the fans. Of course, this one has fans on the side as well. So I forgot to mention that. I want to bring that up because you have to have these ventilated well. You don't want to stick them inside of a box and not have them ventilated so it can cool off the inverter. So for this, you can put it in a space like a shelf that's open, but it, it doesn't have to be as tall. It just needs to be more wide, but you don't have to worry about plugging anything into the back or the sides of this. So depending on your layout of your design, would determine which one of these you would think would be a better fit for you. For me, I like this style a little better because I like everything being in the front rather than having to reach around the back or if this was my back, depending on how you installed, and this is where it's at. Now you can't see the display. So for me, I don't like the fact that you have to turn it around to get to the plugs, whether you're using DC or the AC, you're gonna have to mess around with it. And I don't like that. Just put it in its spot and I can do everything for the front. And ultimately it comes down to whether the advantages and disadvantages that I pointed out in this video are important to you or not. But for me, I lean biased toward the Power 1000 because it has an output power that's much larger than the Delta II. And I have more solar input capabilities with this one than I do the Delta II. And I can charge my drones faster with this one. And the most important one that I think a lot of people are gonna to lean toward is this one comes in at $200 cheaper than the Delta II. Oh, it's much quieter too. I do wanna mention that there is gonna be a huge Black Friday sale and I'm gonna have links in the description below so you can check those out. So I'm just trying to save you money up until Black Friday. If this is after Black Friday, any sales that are out there, you should be able to find them on Amazon or on the company website. But I will put the Black Friday sale in the description below so you can take advantage of that and save yourself a little extra money.